So you might have noticed, hopefully, that it's been a little while since I made a video. And that is mostly because I've been working on my new studio, which has been taking up all my time and it's been a real challenge. But thankfully, I am very much nearly there and I will be breaking down the studio, doing the studio tour and just talking about everything I've been doing in a upcoming video. Uh, but for today, I thought it would be a great opportunity to start posting again as I found a VST that I'm actually blown away by and that is the Mateus Asato Archetype VST by Noel DSP. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about the Corey Wong Archetype in previous videos, but this one is just taking it to the next level. So I'll be talking about the plugin in this video, some of the uses for guitar players, and also uses for people who aren't guitar players who want to process pianos or synths, and you can still use this VST and get some amazing results. So I'll be talking about all that in the video and then using it in the context of a track that I'm making. And you can hear in the background now I'm having a jam with the plugin. This is just DI using the effects, the reverbs, the compression and the emulation all from the plugin. So yeah, I'll dive in and break down everything that it has to offer now. Uh, and also I'd love to know in the comments down below what you've been working on while I've been away. Are there any new tracks that you've released recently you can share in the comments or any new interesting musical projects that you've been working on? We'd love to hear more about it in the comments down below and just catch up on what everyone has been doing. So first I'm going to delve into some of the great features of this VST and then after that do stick around because I'm going to be breaking down a brand new track uh, using this plugin to add loads of warmth and character uh, to not only the guitar but the piano and some of the drums as well. So as the title suggests it was made in collaboration with Mateus Asato. If you've never heard of him I would highly recommend checking him out. He's a phenomenal guitar player from Brazil who's got an impeccable tone, incredible guitar style, who has been hugely influential to myself and many other guitar players who have just been mesmerized by his playing, his tone and his style, which I think has influenced many, many people in recent years. And when I was looking to build my pedal board last year, I was doing lots of research on his pedals and his tone choices because uh, it was a style I really wanted to capture. And I don't want to say I wasted my money, but there is now a VST that has just impeccably done this anyway. So yeah, what are you going to do? But as I said in the intro, uh, it's a great plugin for not only guitar players, which is obviously what it was designed for, but because the effects are so incredible, uh, I think you could apply it to things like synths and pianos and all sorts of sounds to give them more depth and texture processing through the amp and the cab, as well as all the amazing effects that require so little uh, input to get an amazing sound. So this is the VST, and these are the settings that I've been using for the sort of introduction demo. Um, and genuinely, I've been using it for a few days now, and it's such a fantastic plugin. Uh, it's become part of my guitar chain, which I've not changed in well over a year. I could just fit in so nicely. I love the options with the cab emulations. The amp sounds are so fantastic, as are the echo delay and the reverb, which I'll talk about in a minute. So yeah, it's sort of gave me reason to revamp my guitar chain, uh, which, which I don't do often. And even if I'm using the Laney amp as a sort of valve amp sound, I'm still using this for the cab emulations because it's got so many options with the mics and the little setups. So such a great plugin. And of course, I'll be dropping all the links in the description down below if you want to check it out. Um, but for now, I'll just do a rundown of what it has to offer. If you've used any of the Neural DSP plugins in the past, they've all got a similar sort of interface, but there's got a lot of new features in this one that make it stand out for me at least. But generally, this is the interface. You've got the sort of fixed features here, which are present whenever you go to different settings as well. You can always adjust these. You've also got a tuner built in, uh, which is always handy for guitar players, of course. You've got the option to adjust the input and the output going into the plugin within the plugin itself as well. You've got a nice noise gate, which is always good for noisy guitars. Uh, and the transpose is a great feature, so it's super low latency and it adds a nice sort of lo-fi effect. So yeah, I've not really had anything like this, which is as, as low latency and honestly it's usable. It's quite an interesting sound, so I'll definitely be messing with that more. You can adjust from stereo to mono. Obviously, you might have instruments that are stereo, which you want to throw into this, uh, which I'll demo in a minute because they do sound great. Uh, but also, you've got the option to just keep it mono on the input, which then also unlocks this, which is the doubler, if you want a nice wide sort of effect. Obviously, it's using delays to, to give you the width, so you can adjust the delay time here. That's a cool little feature to have. Uh, of course, you can save uh, your presets when you've been tweaking it for hours. Make sure you get them saved so you've got them to access quickly. Always good to have. Uh, and this is the sort of amp page which it opens up on. But before the amps, you've got the pedals. So there's four pedals uh, available as well. The compressor, which I had on for the whole time. It's a nice compressor. Works well on guitar. You've got two overdrives. One is sort of a mid-boost, really warm overdrive. Very Mateus sound, which I'm a big fan of. It can make your solo sort of stick out in the mix a bit more. 
And just gives a little bit more warmth as well if you're doing some nice sort of muted chords. Really nice overdrive, and it's one of the things, one of the two main things I was looking for on my pedal board when I was looking into Metosis sound was a nice warm overdrive and also a tape echo, which this has both, and they both sound great. Uh, there's also a very sort of distortion fuzz type uh, overdrive. A little bit much for me. Obviously, you can adjust the volumes and the gains. I'm going to crank that right down to taste. But a nice warm analog sound in overdrive, which is always handy to have. Uh, and then finally, you've got a modulation, which has got three inbuilt effects. The vibrato. Increase your intensity there. You can also adjust the speed. Get a very lo-fi sound indeed. A sort of nice warm chorus. Got a little King Cruel vibe to it. And then a tremolo. So yeah, onto the big feature, which is the amp simulation. So I love uh, amp number two, which is sort of Fender-esque, warm, thick sounding amp. This one for me just really gelled with my sound uh, and out of the box, it sounds great. I've really not tweaked that much, but if you've got all the sort of usual guitar settings to adjust the bass, mid, treb, adjust the presence, you've got your master, your output and your gain as well. Plus you've got a little uh, adjuster here for different thickness for the warmth. Quite subtle, but good to have. And then a great feature as well is you can turn the amp off. So if you want to run through just the effects, you've got that option as well. You've also got two other amps which aren't so much my vibe, but still sound fantastic. One is the uh, sort of British inspired, sort of bright, clean, amp that would just cut through your mix on your leads. I'm personally more of a fan of the Fender sound, but this could also be a great option for a lot of people as well. Plus you've got the more sort of distortion heavy uh, amp as well, if that's your thing. For those higher gain sounds. You've also got the option to adjust the cab mics and the mic positions. So it's a dual cab sort of set up on this bit. You can adjust the mic positions, the levels, the phase. You can unlink if you want to swap between different cabs as well. And yeah, it's just a nice feature to have and the, and the emulation is really good. So for me, sometimes I will use my amp, which has got the option to run through the amp and then go into a computer. And then from there, I would still want the cab emulation. So this is why this has become part of my guitar chain because um, the cab emulation on this is just brilliant. You've got a handy little EQ on there as well. For me, I just sort of cut the lows a little bit, boosted the mids a bit. You've got a high pass and a low pass. Um, so it's always handy to have for sure. And finally, these two effects are brilliant. So you've got the reverb and the echo, sort of tape echo delay. So the reverb I've been using was the, uh, the hall reverb. Sort of like an 80s inspired hall reverb. You've got your usual settings, pre-delay decay, um, mix and you've got a high pass and a low pass as well. If you want that real sort of shimmery sound, you can adjust those settings. Tweak to the sort of more modern clean plate. Really nice sounds, especially the hall, which is one that I would definitely be using a lot on guitar. I'm quite particular on my guitar reverbs, uh, but this one really just keeps it simple, makes it sound nice, and it's just super easy to use. Plus, you've got a, a really interesting echo, which uh, I think is brand new to Nord DSP. They've not had this uh, in any other VSTs in the past. It's got some really interesting sort of tape um, characteristics with the pitch shifting and the overall tape drive. Uh, so yeah, really cool, really cool effect. So yeah, it's got such a great texture. Um, it's, it's sort of a nice way and something I've noticed Mateus does a lot uh, and you've got the option to do this here is to use it not so much as a delay effect um, on the beat, but a sort of free delay 
sound that just beefs up your solos and makes them really cut through. So you have got the option here, of course, to sync it to the door tempo or to tap a tempo in yourself or to keep it free. And you can adjust the delay time to your own taste, which is a nice, uh, nice little options to have. They've really nicely emulated the sort of speed up, slow down effects of uh, tape delays. You've got a, an array of options to control. But as I said earlier, it worked great on other instruments as well. So I'm just going to demo it now. So I've just loaded up an instance of the Amanda Ro piano. I'm going to turn this on with all these same effects. Really interesting sound, it adds a lot of character, uh, a nice width with all the effects and the presence of the amp is, is really cool on this. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been using this on a couple of tracks already, um, just to, when you get sounds, sometimes they don't quite gel with the mix or they're just missing something. This is a great way to add that. Obviously you can turn the amp off and just use the effects and the cab emulation. Or you can keep it on, maybe reduce the presence. Such a nice sound. Um, of course, you can use the transpose as well. Or keep that off, and as I said, use the effects. And with the tape echo adding such a nice warmth and character to the piano, I thought I would try on some drums as well on a different track that I'm working on. And I have to say, it adds a really nice character and tone to these tracks. So this is it without, and then with. Adds a really nice warmth and texture and it sort of pushes it through the mix a lot better. So yeah, I would recommend testing it on different instruments, drums, pianos, whatever you've got. It's got such a nice warmth character to it. So yeah, I can see this having a lot of uses in more ambient tracks um, and just really anything where you want to add a bit more character and presence. Such a cool VST. I'm going to delve into it more now and make a little demo track. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into that. So yeah, that is the Mateus Asato Arctite plugin. Um, very much top of my list for recommended emulation plugins at this point. Um, and, and it's just gonna be making its way into various facets of my production and guitar playing stuff. So I'll drop a link down below so you can check out the plugin. So yeah, thanks for watching. Great to be back. And please do let me know in the comments down below what you've been up to. If you've got any questions about the new studio, um, I'll try and cover everything. There's been a lot that went into it. I, I completely gutted the garage and built it up again and soundproofed it, built the desk and so on. So there's been a lot that's gone into this studio. It's not quite finished yet, but very shortly it will be. And I'll be making a full breakdown, including all my processes uh, and sort of gear that I'm using and that sort of thing. So do let me know in the comments down below if there's anything particular you want me to cover. But yeah, until then, thanks for watching and catch you next time.